Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Valley Baptist Church. So glad you could join us for our Sunday school hour. If you please turn to 331 in your hymnals, 331. Wherever he leads, I'll go. seen and, un and uh, unnoticed. Lord, and I pray that you please be the pastor this morning, that you just give much and boldness to preach. Lord, let this lesson be uh, an opportunity for Valley Baptist to grow. Lord, so that uh, we may be stronger in the faith, Lord. Uh, Lord, so that we may better serve you. Lord, I just pray that you please go with us into the morning service, Lord, that you just guide, lead, and direct. Cross in your glorious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, welcome to our Sunday School Hour. What a beautiful day. Uh, the heat is back already. <clears throat> Today's Sunday, April the 14th. And we are studying numerology. Get ahead of yourself. <clears throat> the number six is what we've been studying. The number six, and we are on page. 215 in your notes. 215 in your notes. I apologize for the uh, <clears throat> the cost of the cough. <laughs> I made some chili de árbol. <laughs> and the smell is kind of still lingering around, so <coughs> it gets here in the throat. Yeah. Page 215. Six means man, sinful man. And it also means Satan's man. A sinful man in general. We looked at a sinful man in general. Uh, we, looked, we saw that man was created on the sixth day. 
and then uh, we stop on uh, A to D. That's where we stop. So we'll pick it up on number three. So let's go to Romans chapter three. Romans chapter number three. Romans chapter number three. And look at verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So consider Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then arithmetically, arithmetically, uh, 6 equals 7 minus 1. So it sounds like algebra, doesn't it? 6 equals 7 minus 1. If seven is a number of spiritual perfection, then man's number has come short. Okay? We are one number short of uh, perfection. That's the number of seven, the number seven. So the number seven, the number six, uh, was first mentioned in Genesis chapter seven. Genesis. Chapter 7 is the first mention of the number 6 in the Bible. Genesis 6, excuse me, Genesis 7 verse 6 concerning uh, Noah. The Bible says, Genesis 7, 6. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. 600 years old when the flood wiped wicked man off the earth. Okay, so there's a filling right there. 600 years old when the flood wiped the wicked man off the earth. And then we go to Genesis uh, 46. Genesis 46. Genesis 46. <clears throat> Genesis 46 and verse 26. Genesis 46, 26 says, And all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons, wives, all the souls were three score and six. So a total of 66 souls went down to Egypt. Remember that Egypt in the Bible is a picture of the world, okay? So, why did it go down to, to Egypt? What was taking place that they had to go down to Egypt? Famine in the land. No food, okay? Now, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with doing that? Could not God provide for his own people? They didn't even consider asking God. They just went straight into Egypt. Okay? Remember, whenever you go into Egypt, whenever you go backwards, whenever you go into the world, you're going to pick up things from the world. Okay? Think of uh, Daniel and his three friends. As soon as they went to Babylon, that's the world, what happened to them? What did they do to them? They changed their, their clothing. They changed their names. They changed their language. They changed their customs. They changed everything. That's what the world does to you. When you go back into the world, it begins to change you. It begins to affect you. What was the big effect here uh, going back into Egypt? Abraham went into Egypt because there was no food. His son did the same thing. Son did the same thing. What does that tell you? Generational. Whatever the children see the fathers do, that's what they're going to do. Okay? That's what they're going to do. The example, fathers, examples, examples, examples. Okay? They went down into Egypt. 
What happened? They came back with a maid. Mm. Remember that maid? Named Hagar. And now, what's happening in the Middle East? All because instead of asking God, they went into Egypt. Okay, remember that. A lot of times, and this happens right now in your, in your present life, you will make decisions and you will not see the consequences right away. You won't see them right away. And that's going to give you false courage. And nothing's going to happen. But mark it down. Consequences will come. In due time. They will come. Okay? So, a total of 66 souls. Okay, of course, that's not that's not coming. Who? Who's missing there? And the 66. This is a total of 70. Joseph and his family. Okay? So, a total of 70. Now, the lesson here talks about 66. Uh, look at Isaiah 31. Isaiah 31. Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah 31, verse number 1. The Bible says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for hell. You see that? And stay on horses and trust in chariots because there are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. You see what happens? When you need something as a child of God, as a son of God, because you trust the God to be your Savior, and the Bible says that you're in God's family now. John 1, 12, but as many as receive him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. You've done that. So you're part of God's family. Okay? So every time you seek help and you don't go ask your father first, there could be consequences. Okay? There could be consequences. The Lord, the, the Lord is not honored the Lord is not honored when we go to uh, someone else for help. What do we do as human beings? As human beings, right now in the present tense, right now in your life, you need something. Who do you think of first? You don't think of God first. Let's be real. Who do you think of first? I'm going to ask who. Come on. You know, you know. Mom. You're going to ask mom. I'm going to ask my my what? Yeah. My friend, I'm going to ask my what? His wife. The bank. I'm going to ask the bank. I did that. I asked the bank. Listen, we just opened up Valley Baptist Church. And the first month, we had a big four day meeting. Only $800 of offerings came in. The, the rent was $220, uh, $2,200. dollars where am I gonna get that money from? Okay? But being self-sufficient and being a jar head with a hard head, I said, I got this, I can handle this, I, I'll fix it. Because that's what we do. We like to fix things. And what I did, I went to Wells Fargo, sing it to just like that. Went down there, paid, paid, paid the rent. Okay? It just happened that a family had joined that, the church that Sunday. A family that had been out of church for a whole month because they, they, they had some problems with the church in Las Cruces. So they, they came over and started attending our church and, and uh, they decided to become members that Sunday. So they had been saving up all their tithe and they had a big fat envelope. And on that Sunday, they dropped it in the basket. What was God? What was God telling me? Wait. You couldn't wait. You couldn't wait. I, I had it under control. You see, but I had to do it. I don't know if that's just for men. I I I think I kind of think that it's only men that do this. I don't know. Maybe the ladies. Maybe his wife can give us some light into the ladies' side, but. 
I think men, I just, we're just made like that. We're fixers. We gotta do it because we're strong and we're savvy and we're educated and, and we think we, we, we got it. Plus, 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 it's the big one. We like to be in control. That's the fact. We like to be in control. Do you like it when you're not only in control? The, my, my, my unit in Iwakuni, Japan, sent me to uh, Oxnard, California for a class on computers, maintenance computers. It was a Navy program, because I worked with a, with a, I worked for a Navy commander. Even though it was a Marine Corps base, my boss was a Navy man. And the program they used was a Navy program for maintenance, not Marine Corps. And so they sent me to this course in Oxnard, and uh, I went to the class, came back, and then the day I was supposed to fly out, uh, when I left Japan, all I, all, I all I showed to get on the plane was my ID. You got your ID card? Yep, okay, come on in. Right, no problem. So, they need no papers or anything, so on the way back, I did the same thing. I go to the gate, show my ID card, sorry, Where's your uh, your orders? What orders? Do I have any orders? Uh, <laughs> they're in my, my, my luggage. And the luggage already went in to the plane. So I was like, oh no. Sorry, sir. You're gonna have to wait back out there till, till uh, we'll send it back out and then you can you know, get your documents and come back. Well, I was down there and the little, the little, uh, Belt kept running and running and running, and uh, there was a clock on the wall. And talking about not being in control, I was completely, completely out of control. I was not in control, and I did not like it one bit. And the hour came, and the plane went. I missed my flight. I missed my flight. What happens if you miss your flight? Uh, <laughs> It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Hey, Joshua. So I, I get on the phone and I call my boss. I said, boss, I just missed the plane. He said, don't worry, Joe. Take five days. <laughs> Thanks, boss. So it took five days. <laughs> but I just told you that because of the feeling, the feeling, the feeling of not being in control is not a good feeling. It is not a good feeling. Okay, and men do that. Here we have uh, Abraham going to Egypt when he could have asked God. Now this is interesting because Abraham is going to uh, going to the south, and he stops and makes an altar for God, and thanks God. But he doesn't ask him anything, and he just continues. Okay, so. Remember that the consequences don't come right away, but they will come. Trust me, they will come. Just like the sun rises every day, like that. They will come. When you least expect them, then you're going to remember, oh, no. Genesis 13. Genesis 13. We're on page 215, 215 on our notes. Page 215. Uh, A... Five. Genesis 13 10. The Bible says in Genesis 13 10. And Lot lift, lifted up his eyes and beheld all the wind of Jordan. There there was well water everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to Zoar. Okay? So Abraham went to uh, Egypt, it's a picture of the world. Well, here's Lot. He, he's a, uh, he's a, uh, a, a, a shepherd, okay? What does he see? They have a fight between his workers and, and a, uh, his uh, uncle's workers have a fight because uh, there's not enough land, there's too many of them. So he says, hey, take, take your pick, go to the left. I'll go to the right. Whatever you go, I'll go the other way. And he sees here, according to Genesis 13, 10, he sees that it was well water. 
Hey, I got animals. Well watered. What do you think? What do you need when you have animals? You need water, you need grass, right? So what does that look like? Does that look good or what? That looks really good. And here's the point. Sometimes it looks really, really good. Okay? Sometimes the situation looks really, really good. It looks really favorable. And it looks like it will work. And it looks like it's going to benefit you. And you're going to be profited by it. And you're going to say, wow, man, this is, it's got to be through God. Because it's so perfect. Right? I, 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 uh, I remember uh, when we had the big red bus, uh, the brother White and, and another brother brought from California. We had a park right here. We couldn't use it because it's a big diesel bus and it's going in and out and the traffic and all that. So um, I was looking for a place to park, but I didn't want to pay anything. Okay? I didn't want to pay anything. Uh, finally found a lot. $125 a, a, a month. But before that, I was trying to find a place where I could park it. So that I didn't have to pay anything. Okay? So I looked at this big church right here. And they got a lot of property. And a big, gigantic parking lot. And I said, why don't I just park it there? I'll just ask permission. Right? And I called on the phone. And uh, <clears throat> the pastor lady answered. And she said, oh, yes, Pastor, you can park your bus right there. Did it look good? Was it free? Oh, that's a good opportunity. It won't cost anything, right? But you know what that lady does on Sunday mornings? I don't know if you noticed that. Have you, been, have you seen anybody outside? What happens on Sunday mornings? They're all outside waiting for the people on their regalia. Is on okay so you're a visitor you're looking for Valley Baptist Church right and you turn the corner right there you see the church you see the people outside in the regalia and then you look to the left there's a big red bus how does that look doesn't look good does it no no just because it looks good it doesn't mean it's gonna be good okay and so here we have uh, Lot, <laughs> he, saw, he saw the water, he saw the grass, he said, this looks pretty good. I'll pick that. That's where I'm going. And we all know what happened. Okay? It didn't end that well, did it? Deuteronomy 5, 6. Deuteronomy 5, 6. Deuteronomy 5, 6. Deuteronomy 5, 6. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it's going to be good. Deuteronomy 5, 6. The Bible says, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Okay. Remember the Lord when you make decisions. Remember that God is not honored. God is not honored when you go to your uncles and your aunts and your and your grandparents, okay? Or your brothers, and you ask for help. And you don't even pray and ask him. He is not honored. Okay? Just remember that. So we saw that Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. That's number four, Josh. Number four. Noah was 600 years old when the flood wiped wicked men off the earth. Okay? Numbers, five, uh, numbers 35, 6. Numbers. Numbers. <clears throat> numbers 35, verse 6. Numbers 35, verse number 6. The Bible says, And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities of refuge. Six cities for refuge. 
which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, and to them ye shall add forty and two cities. Okay, so six cities of refuge plus forty and two, that makes forty-eight cities. These will be the cities of the Levites. Okay? Cities of refuge. There were six cities of refuge, number six. For the man, notice how it's written there, the manslayer. The manslayer. That means that when you killed another man, okay? If you killed another man, but you didn't mean to kill him, it was an accident, okay? That family of that man has to revenge that killer. So as soon as you kill one of them, they're going to come after you and kill you. So, but if you did not mean to kill the man, it was an accident, then you could go to one of these cities of refuge. That's why they call cities of refuge. There's three inside the promised land and three on the other side of the Jordan River on the east side. So three on each side. Okay, so if you're one of the strifes, you accidentally kill somebody, you could go there and the manslayer, that's the man who's supposed to revenge, he can't touch you. As long as you're in that city. And you have to stay there though until the high priest dies and then you can come out. Okay? Cities of refuge. Did you notice anything about uh, from three, let's see, from number four all the way to number six? Number four says Genesis 7, 6, a total of 66, Genesis 46, 26, Deuteronomy 5, 6, Numbers 35, 6. What do you see? A lot of sixes out. This is sinful man. This is six representing sinful man. Okay? And then from there we move on to letter B, 215B. And now we're going to look at Satan's man. Satan's man. Okay? He is known as the beast in Revelation 13. <clears throat> Back to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Revelation 13, verse number 18. The Bible says, Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast. And this beast is talking about is, is from verse number 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast, that beast. Okay? So in verse 18, that beast is the beast from verse 1. For it is the number of a man. Okay? And his number is 603 score in 6. Or? 666. Okay? And now, this beast, uh, John the Apostle, okay? Is being shown this future events, okay? And this man, uh, he sees him as a beast coming out of the uh, out of the sea, in verse number thirteen, verse one. Okay, but it's a man. It is the Satan's man. Okay, the the book of the Revelation reveals a satanic triad, satanic triad. Let's remember our, our history, okay? You all know this already. You all know this already, okay? And God says, one man, one woman for life. What does Satan say? Guys. Man, man, woman, woman. There you go. Man with multiple women. Okay, there you go. Okay, so, okay, if God, if, if God says, be ye holy for I am holy, what does Satan say? Be ye Be ye as wicked as you can be. Okay? So it's always the opposite of what God says in the Bible. Okay? And not only that, but he is also a what? Blank. Copy. 
copycat. He's a copycat. He copies everything God does. Okay? What was, what was uh, his original sin? Pride. Okay? And what did he want to do? He wanted to be like God. So he wants to, because he wants to be like that God, and everybody worships God, that means he wants to be what? How does he do it? How does Satan get worshipped? Use your scholar. Uh, put your scholar hat on. Ms. Wild already got it. He's ready to go. One of the ways he gets worship is when we put other things before God, put things that he likes before God. Okay? You are very warm. You're starting to heat up, Ms. White. He likes worship when we reject Jesus Christ or when um, we deny Christ. We deny Christ or something happens within the church. Warm. warm. Temperature's coming up. But we're not there yet. Come on, scholars. Let's go. How does Satan get worship. What has Satan created for him to be worshipped? It's all over the world. Okay. Still in the warm level. Meter hasn't moved very much. You guys know this. You know this. False religions. False religions. <laughs> False religions. Listen. The Bible says there's only one God. God says, I am the Lord, creator of the universe and everything in it. There is no other. If God says there's no other, and when you go to John uh, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, okay? And He created everything. That means that if God had not created it, it doesn't exist. So, if God is a creator <clears throat> and he deserves to be worshipped, what are people worshipping? If there's no other God, what are they worshipping? <coughs> what are they worshipping? Who do the Muslims worship? Muhammad. Muhammad? Allah? Okay? Question. This is a, a Christianity 101 question. Okay? Raise your hand if you believe that Allah and God are the same. They're not. But they're preaching it now. They're preaching it. You know that we get ready for a one world religion, right? You know that, right? Because Satan wants to do everything God does, right? So he's got his own triad <clears throat> because God's got the, got the Father, got the Son, got the Holy Spirit. Satan has the same thing. And we're going to see it right here. Okay? Because he copies everything that God does. So, I lost my train of thought. Bring me back. The triad. Satan has the same thing that God does. Yeah. And the Father does. False religious. <laughs> False religious. Okay. Okay, now listen. Where's Muhammad? Dead. Is he coming back anytime soon? Mm -hmm. Do you still worship him? Where's Buddha? Dead. Is he coming back anytime soon? Dead. Do you still worship him? Yep. Is the Virgin Mary alive? Do they worship her? Yeah. Did she die on the cross? No. But do they still worship her like that? Mm -hmm. That's how Satan gets his worship. Because if you are not worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, you're worshiping an idol or you're in a false religion. Okay? It's getting to the point where speaking 
but things like this, it's going to be very dangerous. Okay? Very, very dangerous. A lady was walking to church. Cameras were set outside the, uh, the church. She was going to a church. It was a different kind of church. Uh, and uh, she got up to the stairs, and a young man came, jumped up there, and hit her as hard as he could on the head. She went down to the stairs, cracked her skull, took her purse and everything, took off running. Just the other day. A pastor was sat in Florida just the other day. I'm telling you, it's getting more and more dangerous every day. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of where you're at. Look behind you. Watch your children. Watch your children. Don't let them go. Okay, have, have an eye on them all the time. It's getting very, very dangerous. The number of the beast is 666, according to Revelation 13.8. That's how Satan gets his, his worship through false religion. You name the religion, it's false. You name it, it's false. By the way, Jesus is not for religion. We're a Baptist church. We're an independent, fundamental Baptist church. That simply means that we follow the Bible. Okay, that's what it means. We have bought Baptist distinctives. Okay, we follow the Bible, and we only uh, we don't we don't push a religion because people think of us as a as religion, but we are not a religion. We teach and preach a relationship with a person, the person of Jesus Christ. That's what we teach, and that's what we preach. That's what we train for. Okay. So, Satan gets his, his worship from all the false religions, okay? And as we're getting ready to the, uh, uh, the, end of, the, end of, the end of time is coming very, very soon, okay? Uh, thank you for your prayers. Uh, God delivered Israel. Mm -hmm. If you saw the news, delivered Israel. 99% of all the ancient... I mean, I don't know if you guys were, were having a chance to uh, see anything. There was, a, there was a site that had all the different cities in one screen. And you could see, you could see everything that was going on. And so, but God was merciful. God was very, very merciful. Um, so, right here in Revelation 13, 18, okay, God says that the number of the beast is 666, which is verse number one, okay? And this is the first the book of the Revelation reveals a satanic triad, okay? And look at the chapter 12 with me. Chapter 12, verse 3. Chapter 12, verse 3 says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And then look at verse number 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. There he is. And the dragon fought and his angels. But verse 8 says, and prevail not. <coughs> okay? And prevail not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. Watch this took place. War in heaven, what just took place? There. Satan got kicked out. Satan got cast out. There was there was no no more place found anymore in heaven for him. Okay? He's done. He doesn't have access. Okay? So he's cast. Now where did he go when he got cast out? The earth. He came here. Okay? And he began this evil scheme right at the beginning. With who? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Okay? And that's where we're at now. So, look at the verse 7 says, uh, verse 8 says, and, he, and, he, and prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. 
He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Remember, okay? You have to know something about Satan. He is not omniscient. He does not know everything. He is not <coughs> omnipresent. omnipresent. That means that he cannot be in every place at once, like I can. Okay? As a matter of fact, when you go to the book of Job, and the Lord asks him, where have you been? What does he say? Walking. Walking. And if you go to 1 Peter 5 a, it says about Satan, what does it say about him? He what? Walketh. Walketh. Okay? So how does he make it appear like he's in control of everything? He's got a lot of helpers. Okay? I already did the math for you. I already did the math for you, but I'll do it one more time. Okay? If, if God only had uh, Satan brought one third of the angels with him. One third of the angels. Okay? And God has uh, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands angels. That's how many angels that God has. Which means what? You can't count them. There are too many. So if you, if you brought one third of those, okay, so that we can understand it in more manageable numbers, let's say that uh, God only has 75 angels, right? And Satan brought one third of those. How many did he bring? 25. 25. You see that? But 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, one third of that. That's a lot of angels. Okay? That means they're everywhere. And they run the, they run the, the world governments. They run all the world governments, okay? Uh, seven, uh, let's see here. Verse 9, and, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ, for the accuser of the, our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. <clears throat> Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants, watch this, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, Having great what? Because he knoweth that he had but a short time. You see why he's very angry? He's trying to take as many people as he can. Because his time is out. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of great eagle that she... That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and time and a half times from the face of the serpent. And the serpent was cast out of his mouth, water as flood, after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out, out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnants of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the <coughs> testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? Went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. So who did he go to war against there? The saints. The saints, you, okay? Chapter 13, verse 2 to 4, okay? Uh, and the beast, we're still talking about the beast. Remember the beast here, it, it's talking about a man, okay? Now, this, <coughs> this vision that, that the Apostle John is receiving from God, okay? This is how he describes him. And the beast, verse 2, which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. 
and the dragon gave him power. Now watch that. And the dragon, dragon gave him who? The beast power. So where does the, where does the beast get his power from? The dragon, which is Satan. Satan. Okay? And his seed and great authority. So Satan empowers the Antichrist. Okay? He, he gives them uh, power and look at this. And his seat. Satan gives him his seat. Okay? And great authority. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to, the, to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Okay? What did he just copy there? Remember he's a copycat? What did he just copy? The resurrection. <coughs> okay? That wound in his head uh, would have been something that would kill a, a, a normal man, but he's healed. And what, what does this do for him? The fact that he's healed. Everyone begins to think that he's the one. He's the one. Okay? Because look, it says. And all the world wandered after the beast. Verse 3 of the last part. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Okay? They're worshipping Satan now. And they worshipped the beast. So they're both worshipping both of them. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Okay? This is the dragon. And your first uh, B1A, your first bullet there, the dragon. Satan. Okay? And he's copying God. He's in the position of God. Like God the Father. Okay? And uh, we have uh, verses 1 through 8. Chapter 13, 1 through 8. says, And I stood upon the center of the sea, and I saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power in his seat in great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power is given unto him to continue forty and two months. This is key. Forty and two months. How does this fit into the plan? Close. Grace for seven years, three and a half of peace, and three and a half of. Very good. Very good. But look, he's only given, look, look at this. Uh, verse 5. And there was given unto him, I'm not speaking great things, and blasphemy is power. And it was given unto him to continue, to continue, 40 and 2 months. Okay? So he's only given that time. That's it. Okay? And in, in that time, of course, where is the church at this time? It's gone. In Revelation chapter 4, the church goes up. Okay? You don't see the church anymore after uh, chapter 4. Okay? So here, uh, he's only given that time, 42 months. Okay? Because at the end of that, what's he going to do? He's going to stand in the temple and say what? I'm God. Worship me. Okay? And you know, when when a few years back before the, the cell phone came around and all that, we always used to wonder, how is that going to happen? The whole world's going to watch this. And as I was sitting there with my laptop, and a screen that had all the cities, all the cities and little squares. 
There it is. We're there. We're there. Okay. So we got the dragon, then we got the beast. Okay. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and then the dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Okay. With the saints and to overcome them. The power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. What is that? Complete control. Okay? Complete control. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Now, now watch. Why? I talked about this last time. Why is everyone going to worship him? Verse 8 It's critical. Okay? Five minutes. Eee! We're not going to have time, but look, verse 8 is critical. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. But why are they going to worship him? The answer is in the verse. Because it's already been set. Set that I shall believe it. You're correct. But be more specific. You're correct too, but be more specific. They're worshiping the Antichrist because they didn't get saved. They missed the rapture. They're left behind. Both of you were correct. You see that? The church is gone. Now they're left. Now the only thing they can believe is the lie. Question. Who did that? Who makes them believe a lie? God. God. Why? Because of the hardness of their hearts. That is God's judgment upon them. Mm -hmm. The judgment upon them because they refuse to trust Jesus as their Savior. Okay? And now. All this left for them to believe a lie. Now they're they're like the rest of the world now, just everybody. The entire world is just following the Antichrist. Church is gone. There's no more Christians on the earth. Holy Spirit is gone. Everyone's gone. Do you see, do you see, do you see the importance of why now is the time to get saved? Because the rapture can happen what? It's imminent. Imminent means what? Eminent. Listen, for the past week, they were saying, the attack is coming in 20 to 48 hours. 20 to 48 hours. And they keep going over and over and over and over, right? It was like, okay, two days pass, four days pass, right? And after a while, he's just saying, ah, they're not going to do it. After a week, right? It's just saying 48 hours. But did it come? It came. That's the way it's going to be. We, 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 we keep reading about the rapture, when it's going to happen, and there's still people that are like, not, not, a, not really in a hurry yet. I mean, what's what's the hurry? Yes, ma'am. Um, we can see just a tiny glimpse of what it would be like once God takes his peace, because we think it's bad now, but God is restraining himself because mm -hmm. of the saints. Mm -hmm. But it's, we can't even imagine the evil no, no. that it's going to be when he Ooh. takes it from us. Remember the restrainer? He's gonna let go. And then, and then we're not we're not gonna be here to see it. Father God, thank you, Lord God, for this lesson, reminding us, Lord God, the urgency of the time. I pray, Father God, that you uh, help us to remember that and to uh, be urgent about telling others about Jesus, Lord, that they might trust Jesus. I pray now, Lord God, that you bless the morning service of the Father in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen.